The final week of the Winter Equestrian Festival, week 12, the Rolex Grand Prix, loads coming up for you. We're looking forward to what is a spectacular finish to the season here in Southern Florida. And we bring you a first class lineup of guests to talk it through once again. Join us for the final episode of this season for WEF Weekly. The Winter Equestrian Festival coming to a close. Week 12, as it's known, the Rolex Grand Prix week. And a massive week, the $500,000 Rolex Grand Prix. The culmination on Saturday night for the big jumping action. But of course, as ever, there is something for everyone here on the grounds here as this final session gets underway. But our thanks to Rolex once again, continued supporters of what is the crowning event of the international competitions here in Wellington. An all-star lineup once again and looking forward to this and bringing it to you through Dodd Technologies as well, our sponsors of our streaming too, and uh, an industry leader providing creative design and technical support services for the sports and entertainment industry. And teaming up too with US Equestrian and the USEF network throughout for our major events here in Wellington as well. So thanks to all of those that have been involved for the last, well, three months as it has been. A little bit breezy, beautiful day though here in Wellington, Florida, and we reflect as well on a terrific week last week of competition that saw, uh, well, three big classes there with the wrap-up of the uh, Hermes series with the uh, 150 class and uh, also into the uh, Grand Prix as well. But let's just wrap up the Saturday night from uh, that point of view and uh, also the WEF Challenge Cup because it was a big week for Lily Keenan taking home the Adequan WEF Challenge Cup and the Grand Prix throughout the week on a fabulous Sunday afternoon. We completed out in the sunshine for uh, a double for Lily. In fact, I think the third rider this week to do that, last week to do that, through uh, Jordan Coyle for gold to get to the top in the uh, MS 150 series on Saturday night to cheers the Irishman bringing home the title this time around. Off and running as he goes. Uh, lots of fun had there. I say a big double week for uh, Lily Keenan with both the WEF Challenge Cup and the Grand Prix as well. Emulates uh, McLean Ward and Ben Mayer through this season. And uh, then Jordan Coyle bringing home that uh, series for the 150. Top of the tree there. Very well done to them. And uh, we also caught up with uh, Lily Keenan after that uh, Sunday success, crowning a massive week for her. Here's what she had to say. So this week, obviously, having Aggie as my main horse, uh, every class I put him in, he can win. So when he's the number one, uh, I have a few chances to win some important classes, which obviously he did for me this week. I didn't jump a warm-up class. I just went straight into the WEF, and he was a star. And then he just repeated his performance, if not bettered it, uh, today in the Grand Prix. He's a horse that, uh, unlike many in a jump off, he actually improves from it. Often I find horses, after you jump a speed round, you have to really put them back together uh, before you go into a Grand Prix or, or a jump off. And that's just not his way. He, he gets scope and carefulness from speed and uh, momentum. And that way he's also just a wonderful horse to have in your string because it doesn't matter the style of class, you always have a chance to win and uh, you don't have to waste energy or time uh, bringing him back down in between, in between the classes. He really is my partner, uh, he is a member of my family, he is my mom's favorite uh, for a reason. I am a big believer that your horse has to believe in you if you believe in them. He is so in tune with me, it's like as soon as I think something he's already doing it and I think that's really goes to show that a partnership is what makes our sport so special. It's really about horse and rider working together. Well, super week for uh, Lily Keenan. And uh, to bring you this final program, we also bring you an all-star cast as well. Literally stars uh, alongside me as uh, we welcome the world number one, Henrik von Eckermann. Henrik, um, welcome back to Wellington. Thank you. Uh, great to be back. Yeah. Absolutely. A little bit of sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to this. It's been quite some time since, you, well, it's changed a lot since you've been here in terms of your career. It's been pretty special. Yeah, but I had a, a few good shows in between. <laughs> <laughs> That's the understatement of the year. Uh, Lucy Davis, great to have you here. Olympic Thank medalist you. yourself as well. Um, Lucy, welcome back. It's been a big year for you. It has. Back in the ring, which is feeling very good. Good. Looking forward to talking more about that. And, of course, another Olympic champion, Rodrigo Pessoa. Rodrigo, um, you've been with us throughout the season. It's the culmination of it. Uh, it's time to get that last Grand Prix won. Yeah, it's a good one. If you're waiting 11 weeks to win one, <laughs> this is the good one to, uh, to do it. But it'll be like really tough competition. And uh, 
hopefully a really good uh, a good night of uh, of show jumping in uh, on Saturday night to finish it off. Um, going in there in terms of the, the the heavy weights of the competition, we've got five of the top ten, including the world number one, yeah. over here. Um, Eleven of the top twenty. It's probably one of the strongest fields we've had for a long time. Yes, I think so. That's uh, that's correct. I think uh, you know it's every year there's more more competition and. With the event last last week in Ocala, you know, a couple stayed over, good ones, you know, a couple of Belgians, um, Germans, and uh, and um, Henrik, of course, uh, that is also staying for an extra week. So that just adds to the good ones that are already here uh, all winter long. So it's it's good. You want to measure yourself against really good riders. Henrik, um, getting ready to get them shaking in their boots this week. Um, we, we said before, I think you were world number six when you were last here, now world number one. Uh, since then, it's been the World Championship, the World Cup Finals, Olympic Team Gold, World Team Gold, European Team Gold. Um, what's left? Oh. <laughs> Ask him. He has, yeah. he has so much more. Uh, no, it's so many things. But, you know, uh, of course, I'm happy for... Uh, what happened and uh, and uh, would like to also to win this maybe how do you keep going on from that you you see the world number one spot for yourself and I can talk to Rodrigo about this a bit later as well okay. to to come in and go I want to keep this uh, that's a, that's the easy part I think uh, I always uh, was always uh, driven to do better and better and better and I mean, in our sport, is still even if I won a few good things, it's we lose more than we win, and uh, that yeah, keeps me going. And you know, it's also different horses, and it's always a challenge. And I like the challenge, and yeah, keeps keeps me going. And I'm sure the question you get everywhere you turn up now is King Edward with you, but you do have a wider <laughs> string than that. Uh, yes, King Edward is home waiting for the World Cup final. Uh, I have Khaleesi and uh, Glamour Girl here, so uh, yeah, I, I will try to make it a bit difficult for the other ones, but we we'll see. Absolutely, and, and a few of your European friends are here, Christian Kukuk amongst them, Yeah. Peter De Vos, Niels Brunsiels, um, Peter, and Peter Fredriksen, yeah. of course, as well. Um, they're going to shake things up, I would think, aren't they? Yeah, it's like Rodrigo said, uh, it's a few uh, Europeans, also even if he was here a few weeks, Richard Fogel who won her last year. Um, I believe he will be very sharp and uh, difficult to beat on Saturday. Um, so, but it's good sport. It's uh, that's what we all like, um, to, to, uh, to have good sport. And I think on Saturday night, we will have a really good sport. Bit of gladiatorial um, stadium over there for, for a Saturday night. Lucy, you've been in there during that. Um, what are your thoughts on, on this week looking forward? Because it's always a big week getting into this. No, it's exciting. As you guys have said, a lot of big riders, possibly the the best field in terms of ranking in, in the last couple of years. Uh, I'd say normally I'd, I'd, I'd bet on our world number one, but he didn't bring the king. So <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, I'm partial to the lady riders. Tiffany, I'm a big fan of, of her and her string and her planning. I would imagine that she's already won one Saturday night. Um, she's I think the highest ranked lady yeah, rider is. in the world right now. So rooting for her. I never count Laura out, uh, no matter what horse she's on. Um, and I would say also, you know, our, our big two American heroes, uh, Kent and McLean, they're, they're on their seasoned horses and uh, they're not really in there for experience. So I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine they're going for a win. Um, and, uh, I have to toss in Rodrigo and Major Tom, assuming that's who you would ride. Um, you guys have been knocking on the door and a lot of excitement there with that horse. Rodrigo, that brings me neatly on. Uh, you with Major Tom this week. How do we, how do we feel? Yeah, no, it, he, feels, he feels good. You know, we try to bring him along the winter, knowing that there's still a lot to come the rest of the year. And it's easy to get caught up here in wanting to show, and the temptation is uh, is there. But we've had to, um, you know, keep everything well organized and think about also what's coming up because we have a we have in a couple of months also uh, something really uh, important um, uh, like the Olympic Games. So 
I think mm -hmm. that we've done pretty well. You know, last week he maybe was a little bit rusty um, in Ocala, but that's why we chose to do you know back-to-back -back weeks, and he's going to jump both days um, this week, and hopefully he'll be in a in a in a good shape. And um, but yeah, it will be very tough competition because uh, I think it's. Like Lucy said, I think it's the best lineup that we've had here in a, in a while. It's, it's a tough one. I mean, all of you have got eyes on, on Paris from that point of view of how you plot your year out. You know, for, for you now, as you say, you go back to back and go, OK, now it's time to test things out a little bit. Yeah, you know, there's only so many times during the year that the horses can peak. And, um, you know, the first three months, I think, here, for me personally, I used it as really getting him back uh, he had a long rest after the pan ams and getting him back into the bigger sport he jumped one saturday night only and i wanted to save him a little bit and maybe i save him too much because you know Kala, <laughs> he was a bit rusty but then we we're thinking about this week uh, as our main focus for this winter and then a rest again and then start the outdoor outdoor season a little bit of grass and getting ready for for august so it all requires a lot of planning and and then it's always the question with the horses, you never know what yeah. can happen. So you can make little plans and it all looks great on paper. But at the end of the day, it's the horse that tells you when they're ready to go or not. Lucy, it's always a little bit of mixed feelings by the time we get to this part of the season. There's part of it that goes, we're at the end and part of it goes, this is the biggest bit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I joke with people all the time because everybody can't wait to get to Florida. <laughs> and then midway through, everybody's complaining. <laughs> and then it's week 12, and there's a little bit of renewed excitement and sadness to leave. But um, I, think it's a, I think it's a pretty appropriate amount of time to, to be able to work with a string of horses, as Rodrigo said, really plan, actually do a lot of training with the ones that in the summer you're not able to work with at home as many days so um, it's a great opportunity to be in one place and uh, and and base down here uh, all three of you well for you back home you'll be heading to to Europe Henrik does this for, for several that have been here I mean I guess this is when it starts to get real of this is where we start aiming for Paris after this yeah it's going very very fast um, I, I also made my plan uh, for of course for King Edward and I actually only have three more shows to go, yeah. and then it's time, hopefully. Um, so it, it, it goes very, very quick. That, but that's interesting. You say, I mean, like Rodrigo, you've been through this before. That, as Henrik said, three shows. That. Yeah, you know, everybody knows their horses and what they what they need. Um, if you have a certain experience, you uh, are also able to wait for these shows and make sure that everything is ready to go when it comes time. Uh, Henrik has proven the last couple of years that he knows exactly he has a very solid system that he believes in and that has worked very well for him so yeah you make the plan and you hope that everything goes well that you can stay on en route towards uh, towards the objective so um, but with horses there's always up and downs and surprises and and then along the way you have to be able also to modify the plan if, if, if things happen so it's a very uh, it's a very delicate measurement of what you have to do to be ready for a certain for a certain event. Being ready for a certain event, Henrik, to go back, World Cup champion, world champion, the European medals, the Olympic medals, all there. It, it's all come together. I, what do you think changed? Was it just you and King Edward came as a sister, came together, or is yeah, it this, sure. this is mean, finally this is the result of long long years of work? I, I, I got this horse, King Edward, that is uh, one of a lifetime probably. Um, you know, it's an extraordinary horse. Um, that, like like uh, Rodrigo said, it's a horse that also you can put on the point. You know, I, I know him very well, or we know him very well, and and you can uh, look up and look for the peaks and uh, we found a system where we believe he is uh, most comfortable in for example I, I always have five six weeks rest before for something big I don't need to show so many times keep him fresh and happy and uh, that's uh, that's the main thing um, so uh, yeah uh, that's I think is the, <laughs> the biggest thing um, and with all this of course confidence comes because you have a run and that you you yeah it's uh, 
uh, you are successful and you start to believe a little bit more in yourself maybe and uh, together with this horse then, and or these horses I have to say I have yeah. a fantastic string of horses they all came in the same time together to be uh, mature geno uh, enough to to uh, to jump on the highest levels of show so I could you know, almost go every week with with a fantastic horse. If it's now Glamour Girl or if it's Iliana or Kalisi or yeah, really good horses. So it, everything came on the on the right uh, time together, and uh, try to enjoy it because I know it's not going to be forever. <laughs> mm, I but think Henrik's, Henrik's being humble. Yes. Because he's one of the hardest working riders I know, and we. Uh, Many, many years, many moons ago, when I went over to Germany and was young, he was riding everything he could, working out. You were one of the first riders that was like legitimately working out, doing whatever he needed to do. So it's fortunate they came together with nice horses, but it's been building for a long time. It's, it's a long process. That, no, no, that's for sure. I mean, for sure, I've been working, but still, you know, everything came on the point together uh, with my fantastic owners and, and horses and uh, my wife uh, who keeps everything <laughs> organized together and you know it's the whole package it's it's such a big thing what everyone sees in the ring that's a small part actually but uh, everything around and uh, I have a, uh, a lot of uh, good support around me who who rides King Edward when you're away? Is that Yannick or is, how does uh, it work? Today it was Yannick. <laughs> 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 Otherwise we have a, a good staff in the stable who keeps the horses uh, fit and happy. And you know, like I said, every every piece of the puzzle is there, and and uh, and the biggest piece is uh, really good people. And uh, that I'm very fortunate with. You, you're obviously nodding because you've been through this. You know, the two of you have set records in what you've done in your careers. Well, obviously, you know, like Hendrik said, what you see in the ring is the last, is the last part of a huge amount of work that has been done before, and a lot of people uh, that have put like countless hours to get you there. Um, obviously, you know, the owners are so important also for us um, because we could not do it without them. Uh, we could not afford to keep horses um, of that value. You know, we would have, we would be obliged to, you know, to have to sell. And f fortunately, you know, we have owners that have the passion as well, and um, and that say, no, you're just gonna see where this is taking us. And uh, but you need all of this, you know, at home. It's a lot of a lot of things have to be done in order to you know, create that package. Um, so that's what I think the beauty of the sport, but also what people don't really realize how much is done, you know, it's different. All these different people that have to do their part well. Yeah. And it's not like just whatever, someone's just gonna ride a horse when Henrik is not there, gone for 10 days or 15 days. Someone has to do that and do it well. Um, and blacksmiths and physios and vets and everything. It's, it's a huge it's a huge team but when you can get that great team together uh, you see you know then a top a top rider that is a super hard worker and and uh, super dedicated um, then just do his thing and then when you get a horse that is that talented then the last part is almost easy <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost easy almost easy, <laughs> almost easy. I like but, that. Um, but the horse is definitely you know it makes it makes the job of the rider easier you know you still have to do it and the pressure because all of that also is also pressure that is building on you because yeah. you have the owners and you win and then the people expect you to win and so uh, you have to withstand all of that and um, so yeah it's not by not by chance that he's 12 13 14 15 months there and uh, but it's a it's a it's a team of people Lucy, you yourself, Olympic medalist, world championship medalist. One of the things that you have to do too is reinvent. And what you're doing right now is, is reinventing. What, what brought you yes. back and say, okay, we're going to do this? Because you had that great success with Baron, fantastic career, and then took a step back, mm -hmm. and now a step back in. Yeah, well, I think, you know, the, the life cycle of a rider is much longer than that of a horse. And we're fortunate that we can, um, we can step away and come back. I think that a lot of riders in their careers have 
have um, pivotal moments, and I was fortunate to be very young, have the support of my family and fantastic trainers like the Beer Bombs. Um, I went through college, uh, you know, I, I, I did a lot. I tried to, to figure out after that what my next step was and what my place was in this sport, what I could contribute. Um, and, you know, similar to many riders losing their sponsor, um, I lost my sponsor. I tried, you know, out different ways to sustain it, as Rodrigo said. It's, it's not um, an easy endeavor, and sometimes you have to retire horses, sell horses, reinvest. Maybe it's not quite a King Edward, and, you know, start over. I tried training, and, and I learned a lot throughout the process of finding my way in the sport. Um, alongside of that, I have a lot of curiosity, and, and I studied engineering in school, so I tried to build products that I thought might be helpful for um, fans in the sport, for athletes in the sport, um, and enjoyed the startup life and grind. A lot of parallels from yep. the horse world in terms of working with good people, teams, failing fast, pivoting, um, and I got to a point where I missed being in the ring too much. <laughs> <laughs> so about a year and a half ago, I, I started a crusade to recruit um, a wonderful group of owners who have given me um, the chance to be back under the, under the lights here at WEF and, and hopefully um, can use that as a foundation for an, an, a scalable, uh, more sustainable uh, future in the ring, really grateful to to those group of families. And, and for you, I mean, you're coming in with, with Ben that won the Arkham Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. How's that feeling? Because that's probably a bit of pressure as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't look at it so much as as pressure to what Garrett did with that horse and the Nieberg family. And I'm just grateful for to, to reap the rewards of getting into the Grand Prix again on a very experienced horse. He has all the bells and whistles and it's sort of about getting to know each other. There's always pressure, um, but that's also, I think, what gives us a little bit of vitality uh, and keeps us keeps us back in, keeps us addicted to working with the horses and then being in the ring and, and having those moments where it all comes together. So the drive's back. <laughs> it never left. I just had to figure out how to <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> you, you've been through yeah. that. You, you know, you, you went off, you were, you were our chef to keep at one point, and then you're back with a, an amazing string of horses, and you say you've got good owners with there that actually have been through further back in the sport. What does that feel like? No, it's great, you know, to have the opportunity to have um, owners that are passionate about the sport. Uh, lucky to have the support of uh, Jim and, uh, and Christy Clark, and, and um, we've, you know, always trying to find also better horses and try to build a string without having 25 horses in the stable but the, build the best string possible to be competitive every time we uh, we go out but it requires um, obviously a lot of funds uh, but also the horses to find the horses because we're not the only ones that are trying to do yeah. that there's a lot of people <laughs> that are trying to do the same thing and that are looking for the same horse and uh, you know the last couple of years the People that are able just to buy a horse for any kind of money, there's just a lot of people, you know. It's, uh, so it's quite difficult to put your hands on the horse and then everything has to go right. But you need the start of it is obviously the person that is that tells you, okay, we want to go to the Olympics and we we'll try to have the best horse possible and let's go out there and find it. And you get some and some you miss and some you you get right and it's all it's all part of the all part of the journey but uh, without uh, without the support it's, it's very difficult to do Henrik world number one position Rodrigo's been world number one as well what's that extra push you know you've been up in the top 10 that then went okay number one spot how, how did you feel that you know you've got King Edward in there do you feel there was an actual push for that or did it, it it's one of those that thankfully came with the, with the success I, I always try to to make a plan for what I believe is right for my horses uh, and I knew that I had a amount of group of horses that could perform on, on, on a, a good way of course it was always a dream to be number one but I always tried to just I knew if I could make a good plan 
it was possible if I just you know stick to my plan because I think very carefully you have to be very careful if you start to chase this too much yeah. that you run the horses too much uh, so that I'm actually uh, m most happy with I, I could make a really good plan and and I became number one but s with sticking to that plan and uh, not that I become number one and then the, the <laughs> it's all over and you dropping like a stone because you're overused um, so um, I mean maybe that's why I also stayed number one for a bit longer because yeah I have a feeling that my horses are in a, a great shape and and um, they keep on performing and um, this is my goal to not just have a one year really good I would like to really perform if it's now King Edward he yeah. is old enough to say okay it's time to retire because he's um, he's old but really keep him happy sound and long in the sport so well number one for the next five years then, that's <laughs> <laughs> no that won't, uh, that won't happen <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but it but a lot of that Rodrigo you went through you world number one pretty early in your career from that point of view do you sort of have a different perspective on it now no no it's it's absolutely absolutely right um, if you chase it you kill the you <laughs> kill the kill the horses and you get maybe you get it but you don't stay you stay a month you stay two you months and yeah. yeah you're in and out what he has been able to do is to continue and be for over a year and you know that's really special because that's really a testament of the planning and being able to, uh, you know, keep the horses going and always performing, and yeah, at some point the wheel turns. Also, you know, horses have a little something, and you know, someone else is chasing behind and will get the time. But it's it's good to have done it um, once in your career, and um, yeah, it's it's a nice it's a nice recognition. But I think most importantly, you want to be remembered or you know, talked about, you know, someone that does good to the horses, that is, you know, plans well and that is, you know, keeps the horses a long time and that takes good care of the horses. I think that is, is very important. And number one, it comes, but also it's not like the, the, it's not the end of the, not the end of the world, but uh, I think that particularly in this moment now where the sport is under a high scrutiny, um, from you know outside people probably also people that don't really understand the sport that don't understand what it takes to uh, the way that the riders the top riders take care of the horses and everything I think it's very important you know to put that message out that you know we take care horses are full athletes and we take care of them so very well if these people would go to Henrik's barn or or Kent or Ben Mayer or whatever they would really see what is taking care of a horse they re and they they, yeah they would probably have a different perspective but they need something to like yap about so they need a <laughs> they, they would see they live a royal life yeah. um, we're talking about living a royal life major tom let's talk about major tom and a harmonization of two of you yeah. working together we've got a little bit of major tom here um, but this is again has been the patience from you to have this horse to the top yeah you know we were lucky to be able to buy him as a seven-year-old and we immediately recognized that he was super talented um, but was very sensitive, uh, very delicate. So we did take the time as an eight-year-old and nine-year-old. We didn't push as much. And last year, he really came into another another gear and really was. We were able to consolidate, and and now all we try to do is try to save and you know make it last as long as as long as we can because we know that it's very hard. I know that it's very hard to. You know, find a horse of this caliber, of this quality. Um, so all you want is to take good care of the horses and try to make it last as long as possible. Um, they're very delicate, um, but uh, like I said, it really makes the job of the rider so much easier when you have a horse that is with you and that is that intelligent and that has all the abilities that this horse has. Lucy, swinging it back to how this all fits in this week, and we mentioned some names in there: Kent, McLean. Laura, just a few of those as, as part of this week's event. Um, let's talk Rolex Grand Prix and the thoughts of how that, all that harmonization and hard work comes in. What are, you, what are your thoughts on the American Challenge? I mean, I, I never count any of those three out of any class they're in. Like I said, with any horse, I know Laura's been building up with Bisqueda, um this season and, and giving that mare a chance while, uh, 
well, Balu or Balutinu, yeah. um, rests up for hopefully a big summer. Kent, Kent here Kent with, with Landon. Um, if Kent makes the jump off, I mean, everybody is going to mess up trying to catch him pretty much. <laughs> uh, and, but Kent and McLean are a special uh, competitive jump off pair. So um, I'm not sure which one he's he'll choose for the Grand Prix. He, he always. Kent's uh, going Landon. <laughs> he's going landing. He's going yeah. landing. Well, I'm sure there's a master plan behind that because he is one of the best planners um, and managers, as Rodrigo said. Lauren Biscuit. <laughs> Lauren Biscuit. She's very talented. Mare. She's like I said, just moving up it to this level, this this circuit, and um, has had a bunch of wonderful rounds within the Nations Cup and a few of the Grand Prix. So I think uh, it's a perfect next step for her. And and Laura can ride literally anything. McLean and Callis. Um, McLean and Callis. Uh, he he got second. What was it? Week seven, eight, yeah. eight. And I think he's still bitter about it. So I would imagine <laughs> that he's going to go for <laughs> go for the win here. They were jumped really well last week. So I'm sure are um, are ready to step in straight away and and try and um, we, go for a win. And we we always like a little disruptor in there as well. Carl Cook. Of course, winner of the Million Dollar Grand Prix last season. He's he's got one there that that could shake things up here as well. Yeah, I mean, do you know which one he's planning to ride? Cause Not he has sure. Two options, he's got two so good options. It's two good options. Carl always goes for it. Um, I grew up riding with him in California. We were Zone Ten teammates <laughs> for many years. Um, you know, I think that uh, this mare Kalinka, as well as um, Caracol from Julian Epayard, are are some of the best horses yeah. in the world so they can definitely jump the track and Carl will go for it so do you do you have someone that you've got maybe that's an outsider this week or is it, are we just looking at do you think we're looking at the the, the, the good outsider. faces that we're used to <laughs> who's the long shot I mean it's hard to say because there's so many countries that have really stacked riders I mean I mentioned Tiffany but also Shane Sweetnam's been here doing well all circuit i think he would likely ride his his good horse james ken cruz um there's always some young ones stepping up i i think um it's kind of it's beautiful because similar to maybe golf or um i watch a lot of golf and it, it could be anyone's day yeah. which makes it so exciting there's as henrik said you <laughs> lose more than you win um and so there are definitely favorites but it, it could be anyone in the class Absolutely. Uh, well, lots. To, we're going to, get to have a Grand Prix show as well to give a rundown of who's coming up in there. We've got your views from that point of view. Rodrigo, um, Rolex, you're a Rolex testimony as well. We're, we're into their second event of the season. We already had the Dutch Masters with a very exciting finish there with Willem Graver. Yeah. Um, they've got their four majors through the season with, with Arken as well to come, Spruce Meadows and Geneva. And, and now into the series of shows, this, this is a big year for them. Yeah, you know, um, they've. I've been with them for 25, 25 years now. They're an incredible, uh, incredible partner. Um, they're so much behind the, the sport and really want the best for the sport and always trying to, to get better and invest in shows. And, you know, they got Dublin this year, which is really a fantastic, uh, a fantastic event to add to the eight or nine that they have already. I mean, also the sport, you know, we owe it to them. You know, they uh, have always been there and Despite all everything that happened the last ten years with a with a competitor, they've you know they've always stayed and kept their course and and um, I think we are very grateful to have a partner of that quality yeah. in our sport. Um, they could be anywhere. They are in a few other sports, not many, just motorsport, uh, sailing, tennis, golf, um, and equestrian. So we're very lucky to have uh, to have them. You know, invest in uh, in our sport, and um, um, yeah, I think they're they're a great partner and a great you know for the for the image of the sport. It's a, it's a good good kickoff here as well for the American stage. Yeah. So um, we're going to go and um, have a look at some questions. We got questions for you. Forget my questions. Uh, for, for questions for you, Lucy, we're going to start with you from some of the questions from our viewers as well as we'll take a look at uh, each of these upcoming. So we'll let we'll see what your views are on those. So. So let's take a look at the first of the questions. Um, Lucy, what are, the, what are your plans now you're back in the sport? You've given us a little bit of that. But, <laughs> what but are my plans? Um, 
Well, I, I'm sort of trying to build from from the ground up, as you, as you might say. I started um, with an amazing horse, and I'm hoping to get into some more Grand Prix and and hopefully team events with with him um, to to get back at that at that level. Um, I'd also love to look towards the future. Uh, the Olympics in LA are in my hometown, yep. so. Um, as Rodrigo said, you know, he found Major Tom at seven. You start looking for those really quality young horses that you can spend more time with um, and build up. So I definitely am looking towards a hopefully long-term future back in the ring. Good. Let's take our second question. Uh, how long have you been showing? Hey, that ties in nicely. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like trying to do some quick math. 25 years? I'm 31. When, when did you start? How young were you start? When I was, I mean, I think I did a few local shows, lead line type stuff <laughs> when I was five in California. Um, but I, my parents were very adamant that I not do an individual sport too soon, um, given that I was very competitive as a child. <laughs> and they thought uh, I should be on a team. So I played soccer through high school um, while riding and, and got more serious in high school about competing with Archie Cox and um, Dick Carve and Susie Schroer out in California. And then when I was 17, started going over to Germany with um, Marcus Spearbaum and, and Meredith, which was um, an amazing experience and really took me to the, the senior level. Excellent. OK, third question uh, for Lucy. We've got, how do you mentally prepare going into the big classes? What's, what's your Zen moment? Ooh. How do you do it? I think everybody's different. You have to find a plan that works for you. I, I think if I think too much, I, I stop, stop riding. You know. Um, so, Marcus Spearbaum used to joke with me. I'd be doing homework. Before, I'd be like 15 mm. out, and I'd be doing homework, and mm -hmm. he'd be like, "You need to pay attention. You need to get in." And I was like, "I'm, I'm good. Like I, this is what I need to get my plan and go." Um, so I try to to prepare a lot before the show so that you feel confident um, that you should be in that class and uh, and then I think have to let go a little bit of the expectation and just focus on on um, on you know riding to go clear not to to not have rails there's different a difference to that and if you're clutching too much to an outcome I think that's when I get the most nervous the most in my head and, and it disrupts the it disrupts the outcome, it backfires. <laughs> so, um, so, but it, honestly, everyone is different. There's yeah. a lot of sports psychology and figuring out over time what works and what doesn't for you is, is, is a, a process every athlete has to go through. There are people I even know that go to sleep. Just yeah, oh, that's, there's a series of Lucy napping on tack trunk photos that <laughs> friends have collaged famously. Excellent. So, we'll, yeah. look out, we'll look out for that one. Um, Rodrigo, let's come to your questions um, from viewers. Lots, lots of people as well saying how, go how good you guys are. You're the best, which you are. Um, let's take a look at Rodrigo's questions. Are three for him. Uh, when did you realize that you had a passion for the sport? Day um, one or? No, or? not day one, because when you're very mm -hmm. small, you don't really understand. But um, for me, you know, my father was a, was a show jumper as well, so I lived, I was born with it and I saw it and I did a lot of different sports when I was a kid. Um, but for me, it was 1986, the World Championship, when I saw Nick Skelton and Japalu do their final four, their round. That's the day that I said, this is what I'm doing. And from that day, I dropped everything else and focused just on riding. I was 13. So yeah. that yeah, that was the moment for me that was pivotal in my head of that's what I'm doing. But I was still in school obviously, and it was difficult for me to you know think about school because I was all I was thinking about was the horses and the weekend and what I wanted to do. But so that's uh, that's when I really realized what I wanted to do. Did you ever mention that to Nick Skelton when you were riding when you'd beaten him to say you yeah, <laughs> it's he, your fault? He, now from the movie that came out, he knows how important. I don't know that he knew how important he had been for me, but um, yeah, he was always a, an idol of mine, and uh, and um, yeah, that was the moment when I when I thought this is what I want to do in my life. Good. 
cost them a few classes along the way. Uh, let's take a look at the second question. Um, what was, what's your favorite type of horse, as opposed to just your favorite horse? What's type? Do you have a type? Yeah, I mean the type. You know, by by my size and physical s strength, I like horses that have blood, and I do better with those. Um, I've had one or two horses that had a little bit less blood, but it's it's harder. It's harder for me. Um, but I like horses that have blood, that have temperament, that are really goers. I can deal with that better. I can. It doesn't disturb me. I can try to use that, uh, you know, to our advantage. And so for me, one of the qualities that I look into a horse is, is blood. Blood is very important um, for me, apart from all the other things that we <laughs> look for in a horse. But um, that they really have the the blood is really something that is is uh, important fast running engine yeah. good uh, let's take a look at your third question for rodrigo third and final question for you is what would be your best piece of advice for an adult amateur that's starting stepping up in jumpers <coughs> um you do plenty of training What's yeah we do plenty of training i think what is very what is crucial i think is to stay in your stay in your division until you're really comfortable to move up. I think that nowadays with social media and everything, people get carried away and want to move up too soon and get tangled and get in trouble. I think that stay, stay in your category as long as it's necessary, as long as you're really comfortable and doing it well before you move up. You know, I think that we see a lot of wanting to move up because somebody else is moving up and that you know, it's a dangerous sport. There's and no way around it. It's you have to be careful because it's not like. Uh, and in the same way, you guys are saying is stick to your plan. Yeah, you have to stick to the plan. You know, you have a coach, and hopefully, you know, you put your faith. You're putting your faith in the hand of this coach, and you're hoping that he's taking the best decisions for you, for your safety, for the safety of your horse, and to take you as far as you can go. And, uh, but all of that requires a lot of time and, and patience and sometimes people don't have the patience and think that we're gonna jump the, we're gonna, you know, move up, move jump up the steps and, uh, but that doesn't, that, uh, at some point it, it catches up to you. So I think that the best advice is, you know, to be dominant in one division before you go to the next one. Neatly brings me on to Henrik. Now you're dominant in your division. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the low amateurs. Um, Henrik, let's come to your questions. Uh, that we've got. We have plenty of questions in, of course, for you. Um, how do you deal with the stress of being at the top of the sport? I don't see it as stress. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's better I, than being at the bottom of the sport. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, I enjoy it. You know, I really enjoy it. So it's not as a positive stress for me and that keeps me driving forward um, and I think that is very important when you do with horses because it, it needs like Rodrigo said a lot of patience and you really need to enjoy the process and enjoy the time uh, and don't see it as a uh, as a hard work or a hard thing you know. did, did you ever get nervous I mean I'm always nervous yeah always at the day when I'm not nervous at time it's time definitely to put a hat on the on the side and stop it uh, but I, I'm I can deal with it very good, but um, I, I'm very nervous, yeah. Excellent. Um, let's take a look at your second question. Um, can you think of another in your stable that comes close to the qualities of King Edward? We've only gone with close. <laughs> close uh, <laughs> it depends how close. Or within a with at least sort of a few miles. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, you know, I've had so many good horses uh, through my career, and of course King Edward sticks out um, extremely. Um, but you know, I don't like to to put uh, horses to each other. They all have their qualities, and uh, even if it's not a King Edward quality, but if you see a glamour girl, what she is winning, okay, she's not winning the classes what King Edward wins. But to be able to have a horse that can win every week like that, that's also yeah. a fantastic quality. Uh, so um, yeah. Back to your question, uh, no, uh, no one is close to King No Ed. one's close. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at your third question here. And what is most important advice to keep a horse like King Edward fit for the long term? We touched on that a little bit earlier, but give us a little bit more insight um, there. That's a daily work. 
You know, that's what we do every day because the horses involved through years, they don't, they change. It's not like when they're nine, they will stay like that to the 16 or 17. They do change by time because their bodies get older and so on. So you have to always adapt to that. And uh, that is the daily work, what we do. Always spend time with the horses to feel, oh, is something changing? Uh, is something different? Um, um, I have a good plan, but of course you have to be able to adapt to how the feeling is. And uh, that's why it's important to, to know your horse very well, so you can see a little bit what's going on before something happens. And uh, yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> what, what's King Edward's plan sort of like? Is it, is it a lot of hacking out? Is it, is it a lot of arena work? Is it a lot of... I, mean, I guess you don't jump many big fences. At no, all exactly. I mean, he, he's not a horse who he jump big jumps. He just have to stay really fit in his body. Um, but like I said, it changed. Like when he was younger, I almost didn't jump at all at home. And now when he gets older, he have to jump a little bit more, actually, but small to yeah. keep his body. Uh, in, a, in a good shape, so you know we, we try to develop to um, to have him in best shape. But it's you you try to feel what's <laughs> what's right and uh, listen to your horse in the end. Just like you, you've changed your gym routine over the years. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> if I would start to pull the weights what I did a few years ago, I, I wouldn't could, I couldn't stand up in the morning. Probably. <laughs> he might put his back out yet. Yeah, there's still a chance. <laughs> Uh, well, it remains to say um, thank you to all three of you. Uh, great to have you on here, and we look forward to a massive week ahead. Um, Henrik, good luck. Thank you very Fingers much. Fingers crossed, and, and good luck for the rest of the year, because it's a massive year for, yeah. for everyone getting involved. But going in as well, number one, always puts a little bit of extra pressure on you. But, you know, okay. as we said earlier, you, you, you get lots of extra interviews, but that's not a bad thing either. <laughs> as long as I stay number one, it's okay. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Lucy, good thank you. Thank you so much. Um, good luck for an amazing year. Thank it's going to be exciting. Looking forward to it? I'm very excited. I know you like a challenge. I do. That's, <laughs> that's what keeps us, as Henrik said, that's what keeps us going to, uh, to really go for things. Rodrigo, big year ahead as well. Fingers crossed? Yeah, that's the least that we can wish each other because you know, at the end we're competitors, but we like to see also the success of other, other riders and we appreciate you know, when it goes well for other riders as well. And, Wish them the best of uh, the best of luck. It's a, it's always tough when you do a big sport like that, which is why everybody gets on. Whether it's motor racing, you wish everyone the best out there on the yeah, field. Yeah, there's a bit of rivalry, but you know, at the end, we we appreciate when it's done well, and you have to take, tip your hat off when it's done it's done in a, in a good way, and you have success. If you've had a bit of success yourself, you know what it takes to get there, so you appreciate it even more. Excellent. Good. Well, good luck to all three of you. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, um, have a fantastic week and join us all throughout this week as well for uh, Rolex Finale Week as well. It's going to be Saturday night, $500,000 uh, class as well. I remind you, we're going to be coming to you from 630 for the uh, Grand Prix pre-show there as well. Stats brought to you by Jumper. Um, analysis brought to you by the likes of Lauren Huff and BZ Madden. They're going to be joining me in the studio as well. And uh, then we're going to be heading on at 7.30 into the class. I'm going to be joined by Meredith Michaels Bibam. So we've got an all-star lineup to bring you what is an all-star lineup of riders as well this week too. And uh, thank you very much for joining us all season. That's it. Last Web Weekly done for 2024. I'm going to go off for a rest. Well, not yet. I've got a big week yet. Uh, but thank you to all of you that have tuned in in and uh, we hope we brought you lots of information lots of insights on the riders lots of behind the scenes and uh, on to bigger things in uh, 2025 as it'll be um, looking forward to this finale week uh, join us for that each day as well we'll bring you the big classes too including tomorrow's adequate weft challenge cup but saturday night is the big one don't miss it rolex grand prix see you then <laughs>